In one corner of the Raspberry Pi is a 26-pin expansion header. The numbering of the pins is as follows, with the even pins on the outside of the board. If you flip the board over, you will see that pin 1 is shown with a square outline, in case you forget which pin to start counting from. This table identifies each of the pins in the expansion header. The red pins are connected to the Raspberry Pi's 5 volt rail, meaning that they are at a constant 5 volts. But since the 5 volt rail is connected to the power supply, the exact value of the pins will depend on the quality of your power adapter and micro USB cable. The orange pins are connected to the 3.3 volt rail, giving a constant 3.3 volts. And the black pins are connected to ground, which is a constant 0 volts. All of the remaining pins are known as general purpose input output pins, or simply GPIO pins. They are also connected to the 3.3 volt rail, but what makes them special is that they can be used to read voltages, and also they can output either 3.3 volts or 0 volts. In other words, GPIO pins can be used to control, whereas the red, orange, and black pins are stuck at a fixed voltage. The green pins are generic GPIO pins. The purple, yellow, and blue pins are also GPIO pins, though by default they have been assigned for a special function. So in total there are 17 GPIO pins. Unless you are using SPI, UART, or I2C, it's best to stick with using the green GPIO pins, though all of the GPIO pins can be reconfigured. So far fairly simple stuff, but GPIO pins must be used with caution. To understand why, let's follow the copper trace from pin 11, which is a standard GPIO pin. We must flip over the board to continue following it. Continuing along the trace, we finally arrive at the central processing unit, or the CPU. It makes sense that pins which can be controlled are attached to the control center of the computer, but it presents a problem. Only a small current can pass through the CPU. If the current is too high, the CPU can be damaged beyond repair. So we need to take a moment and talk about limits. All 17 GPIO pins are connected to the CPU. They can be set to 3.3 volts or 0 volts, and the current from and to these pins should be limited to a maximum of 16 milliamps. The 3.3 volt pins provide a constant 3.3 volts, and the current should not exceed 50 milliamps. Since the GPIO pins are connected to the same 3.3 volt rail, their current also cannot exceed 50 milliamps. For instance, the Raspberry Pi will run into problems trying to run 6 GPIO pins at 10 milliamps each, as the total of 60 milliamps is higher than the maximum allowed current for that rail. The 5 volt pins provide a constant 5 volts and are the most generous with current, as they are being powered from the power adapter connected to the Raspberry Pi. At most, the Raspberry Pi can take 700 milliamps of current, but much of that is used up by the Raspberry Pi itself. So there is probably only 200 milliamps of current left for the 5 volt rail, assuming nothing is connected to the USB ports. Also, if you exceed the maximum current of the 5 volt rail, most likely the Raspberry Pi will power off and you will need to wait a little while until you can use it again, but there shouldn't be any lasting damage. Now you may be getting the feeling that your Raspberry Pi is underpowered and too easily broken, but you will see later that GPIO pins often only need very small currents, as they are usually used for electrical signals, not for powering devices. Specifically, when we discuss the transistor, we will see how we can use a very small current from a GPIO pin to result in a much larger current from a secondary power source.